Hello, everybody. This is Dottie Berry, and uh, well, I'm the Google Hangout Maven and the person who loves tiny homes. So recently, I've started a page, a community page for people, Tiny Homes Revolution. Just search for that, and you can find us. But I'm really excited today because I've got Ian Kent, and he is the gentleman who has developed what we call nomad micro homes. And here we are standing in one. This is one in the Pacific Northwest of North America, so to speak. So recently completed one. I mean, Ian, you know, some of the things I have to ask you, and, and we'll kind of, maybe we can go up and show that loft there. This is how big? <laughs> this is 100 square feet on the main floor, and then you've got a 60 square foot loft space up above that you can use for storage or whatever you want. Wow. So what led you to do something like this? I mean, you're 35 years. Let me just properly introduce this gentleman. 35 years in the industry of commercial, uh, residential, and, and now this is like a, a, a shift. I mean, I saw your video. You're on your bike. You're, you're talking about this paradigm shift that has to happen in our thinking. What led you in your thinking to create something like this? 35 years of building in, uh, in a city is, is a lot of um, headache and stress and uh, um, financing is, it contributes to that as well. And it's an industry that um, um, I just found that I, I needed to change in and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I combined all my experience from design and I uh, basically put it into um, trying to create something that the masses, because Vancouver and many of the cities are very expensive for people to, to live, I decided to put all that effort into, into creating a unit that was affordable and uh, that could be um, accessible to the biggest part of the uh, population. Mm -hmm. Basically, people that are working nine to five with regular jobs and um, came up with Nomad. I mean, I, the exercise was to try and find the smallest footprint and make it work. Yeah. And under 100 square feet is quite nice because it is low impact for neighbors, will fit in a backyard very well without any disturbance, doesn't even uh, affect the land that it's on if you put it on screw piles. So it's, uh, it's very environmental. And um, this is what we came up with. Every, yeah. Everything works twice for its size. So. Wow. Well, for those of you who may not know, uh, what is the definition of a tiny home? And I'm sure it's like any other definition. People have their different ideas. But in general, it can be anywhere from 80 square feet to 800. Now, that sounds like a wide range. But like even in the U.S., where I'm from, the average home size is still almost 2,600 feet. That's insane with what's going on in our economy. Mm -hmm. So we personally... Uh, we took a year-long journey around the U.S. in a little 13-foot trailer in 2005 and 2006, and we came back and we downsized. We thought, oh, 1,100 square feet, you know, but uh, about 200 of that is a sunroom. So we also have a 400 square foot cottage next to it. So we're, you know, we're in that tiny space that really appeals to me. And so, like, I'm thinking over in that side yard, you know, this is a, a just a I don't know. It's great to show people. I want to show people what's possible. Mm -hmm. That's what. I, so when when I found you, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's my birthday. What would I rather do than meet with somebody who has exciting ideas? And I know you put together a great team. Can you tell me how you all came together? Because you've got a couple other people working with you in your in your company, and they sounds really exciting from what I read about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got a great lady that has uh, done a lot of real estate marketing uh -huh. with me in the past years. Um, uh, her name is Joy, and she has uh, done multifamily projects and uh, lots of work in the industry, uh, food writing and mm -hmm. so on, and advertising. Um, so um, she was a natural. She's been on Facebook and just doing a wonderful job for us. We have, I think, just peaked 20,000 uh, yeah. followers now in about a year and a half, which is pretty great. Um, and a fellow by the name of Terry Beach, who is our advisor, he's a, uh, a prof at one of the local universities yeah. here in entrepreneurship. I love he's that. Running, <laughs> running for the Liberal Federal Party right now, and, and uh, he was actually one of the youngest aldermen uh, ever in uh, British Columbia. So very progressive on several things. 
Hello, everybody. This is Dottie Berry. Oh, and, uh, you know what? Wow, the Google Hangout page. It's okay. It's uh, hooking into where I sat. We should lay on sort of that page. Yeah, yeah these things happen sometimes. Tiny Homes uh, Revolution. Yeah. It's always makes it fun. But I'm really excited today because I've got Ian Kent. And he is the gentleman who has developed what we call No Man. Okay, I just had to get that off. <laughs> You know, we were kind of like on the fly here. Uh, we actually hooked in with Ian's internet on his phone. So we're having some really fun things happen. What's happening there, Ian, is this is actually uh, playing on Facebook as we speak. Oh, right. A Google right. Hangout, yeah. for those of you who do not know, is simply a YouTube video that's live. Google owns YouTube, and when this finishes, for those people who didn't get to see it live, it's an evergreen YouTube video. When people say, what is a Google Hangout? I say, you know what YouTube is? Okay, it's a YouTube video going live. And what happened was, uh, I have it, and some of you all got that link this morning where you could watch, and I had that up, so it started rolling. <laughs> anyway. So we're just hanging out. We're just hanging out here. <laughs> hanging out. So I've um, got a few questions I do want to ask you to, sure. to get covered here. Um, and, and, and that is, you know, what are some of the key benefits of the Nomad Microhome? I mean, it's, it's unique, it's innovative, it's sustainable. Let's talk about a few of those features. Uh, well, just in its size alone. Is, is a benefit. Yeah. As I said, it's, it's low impact. Um, and its size also allows it to use uh, services very efficiently. <laughs> so if you're going off grid, some of our, our off grid um, technologies can actually work because you're really just servicing one room. Mm -hmm. uh, other advantages are the, the unit is very, very light yes. the way it's constructed, and it's small because it's a small package because right. it is a small house, so it okay. has to go anywhere cheap, globally. Uh, globally. In a container. In a, in a 20 foot container, you might even get two of them in if you really try. So, so um, I was thinking truck. maybe I could truck. buy that container too once they ship it. I mean, you know, you really, when you start looking at resources and what's being done, I'm actually going down. Uh, there's a company in London called Simple Box, mm -hmm. and they have containers. Yeah. And I'm going to go interview them, you know, about the containers and how they're putting them into homes. That's a little bit different situation. That's kind but of that's interesting still. idea, though, because it, it would provide that extra storage and whatever, yeah. you know, whatever you needed your yeah. other room for. Right. Alternatively, you can buy another Nomad and connect them. To that's a, one thing I wanted to ask you about, because you know, let's face it, 100 square feet is is great for one person. Two people even. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have a couple of kids and they're thinking, yeah. oh, we've got to have a 2,600 square foot home. Really? I mean, like maybe if you had something smaller, kids would be out playing and exercising. Well, we can create two bedrooms, one bathroom, kitchen, living, dining, and an office in 200 square feet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. And it's a, it's a very comfortable layout, actually. It gives you privacy in different rooms. And, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that, uh, uh, the way it doesn't impact uh, because of the footprint of it and, mm -hmm. and how you put it together. I found that really fascinating when I was reading about it. Well, another advantage of the way Nomad is constructed and its size is that it's light and therefore doesn't need a very um, substantial foundation. So uh, at $20, for $20 at Home Depot, you can purchase what they call a screw pile or a ground screw. And you hand auger those into the ground using a two by four for to torque and just walking around in circles mm -hmm. and uh, putting four of those in. And then there's a fine adjustment on top with post holders. You can lay uh, some treated beams across and then start laying your nomad panels right on top of that. So in an afternoon, you can have the foundations in and, uh, and start it on your floor panels for the nomad. And you're not touching the ground, only four tiny spots. So this is important because. Uh, I'm sure some of you all know the challenge today is some of the zoning laws, I don't care where you go, they've been structured in such a way that it makes this wrong. Uh, but the, in, some places, the kind, yeah. in some places. But the way you've done that structure is incredibly important because no yeah. permanent foundation. And that's a real key. Mm -hmm. Even if we you know, start talking about you know things on wheels, which is one of my questions. Can you put this on wheels? That's another idea I have. But um, 
So, so that's incredibly important in terms of how you place these, and, mm -hmm. and what has your experience been so far in that arena? Well, just like the zoning um, for minimum size, mm -hmm. um, every town and city has its own set of bylaws. Uh -huh. Now, we're not talking about the National Building Code or the International sure. Building Code in okay. the U.S. We're talking about bylaws, and every little town can have their own set. So some towns don't have a minimum size. They forgot. Mm -hmm. So, or they are welcoming smaller units mm -hmm. now that they're starting to think about those things. And uh, Nomad is able to come in, like uh, several parts of this area. Um, the um, uh, sorry, what was the the question at the beginning? Was to well, just because so, of uh, not having the foundation oh, that's right. permanent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so just just like there's bylaws for minimum dwelling size, there are also bylaws for, or definitions in their bylaw for yeah. uh, temporary structures and non-temporary structures. Right. So if you fit within their non-temporary structure, it could be crazy things like um, you have to be able to deconstruct the house in 12 hours. There's, right. there's a town around here that actually has one. Yeah, so, okay. Um, so it, you, you just have to check out your bylaws. But most of them do have a temporary structures permit. Mm -hmm. It could be ongoing, or it could have a time limit. But right. You just don't know. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's interesting is um, just like you know maybe Vancouver, Seattle, big towns, they're really looking for ways, number one, to make things affordable. Uh, and, and there's only so much space. Those that's are right. two things you have to consider. Yeah. But also think about the small towns in the United States, for instance. I believe it's Spur, Texas has now calling itself the tiny home capital of the world, so to speak, because they said, hey, we want you to come to our town, because they're looking at the economic benefit. There are only a 1,000 people in this little town, and they're saying, uh, this is going to be an economic boom for us. Now, you know, we're not probably going to grow to 100,000, but you can get the small town living, but we welcome you. Mm -hmm. We've changed our bylaws specifically, yeah. Yeah. and they're putting the welcome mat out. Yeah. I think we're going to see some of that, do you? We already are. Yeah. Uh, in Portland, the mayor has been very aggressive recently in the news, mm -hmm. uh, stating that they have announced, or they, they've announced a, a project for homeless there. They've designated a piece of property and mm -hmm. made a deal with one of the local tiny home builders there. Yeah. Uh, they're larger than this unit, um, but I think there's, hmm, I'm trying to remember how many units, 20, 30 units, something yeah. like that. I think so that's set like, well, and I've been talking with right. him. Yeah. 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 Uh, in fact, uh, you know, when I was looking and researching, I came across them and you and them were the two key groups that I was just really, mm. I don't resonate with because my desire is twofold. Number one is to create affordable housing for people, for homeless communities like they're doing in Oregon or people who make less than 15000 And the other group is just people who want to downsize mm -hmm. and, and actually have a home. And we, in the U.S., we look at kids coming out of college. Yeah. Good luck with being able to own a home yeah. anytime soon. They're, we're going to be 10 years into paying off college debt if That's they right. go to college. This is a perfect little house to pay that off. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, these are these are great things. Um, can you put these on wheels? Have you thought about that? I mean, you could. Um, <clears throat> however, it's 10 feet wide as opposed to 8. So most tiny home trailers, uh, eight by um, when you're trying to make them in accordance with the uh, mobile home yeah. um, specifications, uh, and I, I believe there's certain laws on the highway for eight foot yeah. or more. You yeah. have to have special permits, that kind of thing. So no matter would probably have a have to have a special permit. Also, the height is in question because we're about 13 feet. Yes. Just the structure. When you put that on a flatbed truck or a trailer, you're not going to be able to get under some of the underpasses. Yeah. So our model has really been focused on flat packing and building very quickly within mm -hmm. a few days as opposed to trucking it around the nation as, as a because it, it is more expensive to truck it that way yeah. and to ship it that way. So there's four days that you can build this in? Is uh, that right? we, we can erect the structure and we were at the Globe 2014 in Vancouver or the conference. Um, we erected the structure in about six hours. Uh -huh. And then it took us the rest of maybe a day or so to sort of outfit the interior. Right. Um, I'm suggesting that uh, it would take about four or five days, something like that, yeah. for a couple of handymen to, uh, right. to finish it off. Or handy yeah. women, as it might be. That's right, handy people. <laughs> handy people, there you go. 
Um, yeah, and, and so this brings me to, you know, like globally, if the disaster happens, I mean, this could be incredible for helping with, uh, you know, the Red Cross or something like that. I think you gave an example of that. Yes. Um, well, it's one of the markets that we'll be approaching. Mm -hmm. and it, it will be more of a niche market with hypnosis, I believe. Yeah. There's, there's some pretty large companies uh, already set up for those yeah. um, with the FEMA type trailers sure. and so on, right? Um, but Nomad is going to be less cost and it's actually going to feel more like a home than yeah. a trailer. Right. So that's where that niche will mm -hmm. be created, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Well, uh, Robbie's been very nice to hold the computer mm -hmm. here. So, uh, C could we go up Absolutely, and, and, yeah. and we'll just kind of walk up? I'll take it and we'll kind of walk up and, and see how this works. You want to go first or leave it? Uh, why don't you uh, okay. make the computer? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this as we speak. I'm carrying it Are very okay carefully. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go upstairs here. Oh, my goodness. What's that now? I said, how did the stairs feel when you walked out? Oh, it felt great, actually, you know? Okay. Hey, I'm just sort of looking here, showing the outside. Yeah. So we've, we're right here, and this is the loft, and how big is it? Uh, this is 60 square feet. Uh huh. And if you point it over there, there's a fairly good-sized closet that's built in. Oh, right over here? Yeah. And the bed area, it, right now, it's suited for a double bed. Okay. Um, but we could adapt it to uh, queen size by just simply moving one side out six inches yeah. towards the window there. This is incredible. And you've got enough space to kind of crouch at one end, not uh -huh. quite stand, but with some furniture there with the, what we specified, you uh -huh. can actually sit. Like right here? Yeah. Gets this wall. Yeah, so you can sit on a bench there and uh, pull up your socks and, and get dressed comfortably. Yep. This little window here opens up completely uh, like a door mm -hmm. and um, would be used for emergency exit if you ever had to. Okay. It's uh, sized in accordance with the code and uh, ready to jump out uh, all seven feet to the ground. <laughs> well, that's very important with all of your experience in the industry. Um, I would like to think that all of that has been considered. It has, yeah. I mean, you got to have uh, put 35 years to use, huh? So this just kind of shows how this is. And then maybe you can look up there to the, oh, yeah. the open ceiling area. That's a good idea. This is what really makes Nomad livable is this extra high ceiling in the living room. Mm -hmm. And all the windows make it feel... Natural light is really important. Oh, so yeah. Space to size. I know that's one of the things we have in our home is we wanted to bring the outside in so we have great skylights and that kind of thing. So anyway, um, yeah, here we are. Now we're silhouetted because we've done right. it the other way. But anything else that you could offer us, like where do you see the micro housing industry going? Um, I believe we're uh, we've created a product that's. Um, the, the first kind of commercialization of it. Mm -hmm. um, many of the companies are building high quality, tiny homes on wheels, uh, wood frame, more and more traditional, um, yeah. using more traditional technologies. But there's limitations, right? They, they can only service their own country. Yeah. Uh, they have to be built fully and then moved to their non flat packed. And uh, the cost is prohibitive too because they can be fifty, sixty to a hundred thousand dollars if you're getting them to do the majority of the work. Um, or you can take a real steep learning curve and try and build it yourself, which yeah. not many people can or have the time to do. So um, I think um, it's really I mean I think ultimately you're gonna be able to three D print your your little house anywhere, but that's a little ways off because you, you're not going to get some of this fine millwork right. and some of the things that we're used to in a, in a comfortable home. So um, this is um, a, a pretty close um, rendition of commercialization on, on the tiny home market for sure because it's so lightweight, super easy to put together, and uh, no cutting or anything like that. So. Well, these are the things that appeal to me, quite honestly. Um, you know, I'm about leveraging. And, and my, my daily, um, I guess, motto is uh, connecting, engaging, collaborating, innovating, 
and leveraging our unique collective talents globally to form synergistic partnerships. Absolutely. And while I love the tiny homes and I see people building one on one, I know there's a there's a good feeling about doing that. And I'm not saying I might do one of those just to experience it one day. But I'm really looking globally at how can we leverage things to make a difference for people in the economic times. And, and I don't think we're going back to the way things were. You know, we have to be concerned about our resources in many ways. Absolutely. Resources are running out. Um, as you know, we've got a recent water problem right now down in California. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to address that. And uh, housing is, an, is another big problem. And uh, economics. Um, finding jobs and all that comes into play. Um, so we're, we're trying to address that as much as possible with one sort of primary solution, that being the Nomad. We're actually making our own water from air, even in a desert climate. Tell me about that. Um, it's called atmospheric water generation, mm -hmm. and uh, we can make up to 20 liters of crystal clear, beautiful drinking water a day. And it comes right out of your tap. And at the same time, uh, you could be cooling your unit because that byproduct is either heat or cold air. So uh, So for people listening, is that like one of the atom potentials? It is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there's like four different models, yeah. is that correct? Let's just uh, well the, the basic model is nomad space, which we're basically standing in right now. So uh, it doesn't have the plumbing uh, or or bathroom in it. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's sort of roughed in for a bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, the owners are going to do that later. Mm -hmm. um, and that's running for around twenty-three thousand dollars Canadian, mm -hmm. and then up from there is the full live model, which has all the appliances and bathroom kitchen, and uh, it's twenty-eight thousand Canadian. Now you can add what we call Nomad Grow to that, mm -hmm. and it's basically an empty Nomad. It's a shell. It doesn't have the appliances, finishes, or anything. It's a utility room that will house. It'll give you an extra hundred square feet of storage plus the loft, but it'll also house all your off-grid technologies. If you're in extreme uh, climate conditions yeah. or um, or wherever, um, it'll provide your equipment for um, holding water to so your tanks. It'll provide your water making, which um, actually just goes right under the kitchen uh, mm -hmm. sink, so you actually don't need that for that. Um, and with the water that you use, we can also clean that to the point where you can reuse it to grow food in Nomad Grow through vertical growing. Mm -hmm. So you have a vegetable garden in there, and it's with a skylight and everything, um, and that water is recycled over and over again to create your plants, and it's also used to flush your toilets again. So it brings new meaning to raised garden beds, doesn't it? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So you're growing good vegetables all year round. Yeah. It's, it's a great place, essentially. Yeah. So insulation allows uh, any season to utilize this. Yeah, we wanted to make it flexible. I mean. It comes R12 right now. It's a three-inch mm -hmm. wall filled with, uh, right. with insulation. Um, but you can increase that uh, to whatever you would like because it's very easy to add just your pink or blue styrofoam you find at the lumber store on top of it on the outside, right. uh, mechanically fastened, and then you put your siding on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very inexpensive, very easy to do, and you can get as much insulation as you want. The windows can be triple glazed and... Um, Heating this little space, if you're in a very cold climate, like we're talking about people in northern Canada, mm -hmm. negative 50 degrees mm -hmm. Celsius, and um, uh, we believe that that will be a comfortable home because it's not going to take much to heat. Just the three of us, our body heat in this yeah. unit alone is, is bringing up the temperature. So Yeah, the excitement alone about it <laughs> <laughs> is going to have us heat. Yeah, that's great. Well, Ian, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to kind of do this hangout. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's I, I'm known kind of as a Google Hangout maven, and uh, when I get excited about something, I don't just want to, you know, come and talk to you. I, I want to allow other people to experience yeah. this because as people find this on the internet, they're going to go, "Oh my gosh, that's amazing!" Mm -hmm. Because part of the thing are what we've got to do is educate people that this yeah. is possible. A lot of people just don't. I mean, no, we haven't even advertised yet, yeah. and uh, just through Facebook and Twitter today. Yeah, we've had a huge following, but. Um, we're almost afraid to advertise. <laughs> <laughs> but it will, it will All the people like me are going to, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, thanks everybody for joining us today. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, sit down and, and talk with Ian and, and just sort of uh, pick his brain a little bit more about, hey, 
what's it going to take to get one of these over uh, where I live and, and sort about how I could uh, potentially offer these to those of you who are interested in the U.S. and, and beyond. I was, uh, George was going to try to join us from Greece today. I don't know if we didn't get that link to him quick enough, but uh, yeah, we have people all over the world, I think, that are going to be interested in this. So I appreciate your time very much. Absolutely. It's been great. Yeah, nice thank you, Ian. Yeah. yeah, a pleasure. Okay. Okay, okay you all. We'll Bye see now. you next time on the Tiny Homes Revolution Hangout. Oh, I guess so.